The UP has had many famous locomotives throughout its 150 year existence, but none are as probably as famous as the big boys and challenges that would rule the railroad during the 40s and 50s with their immense strength and size. However, before I get onto those beasts, the history of the engine that caused the famous engines to come to existence needs to be explained. But before I get into the history of 9000 class, is a special shout out to the amazing people at Sunderland Cakes. Have you ever been staring into your fridge and wondering what to have? Well, I'm going to make that decision a hell of a lot easier. Go check out Sunderland Cakes. This group of dedicated people are willing to provide you with the best desserts possible, whether that be a beautiful cheesecake or elegantly decorated cupcakes. If you want to place an order, then there is a link to their Instagram in the description below. The 9000 class. This class of 88 engines was introduced by Alco, the American locomotive company, from 1926 to 1930 for heavy freight trains on the Union Pacific network and hold the distinction of being the only standard gauge 4122 locomotives in history. They also held the record for the largest non-articulated steam locomotive built until 1934 when they were dethroned by the larger, yet catastrophic failure, Russian AA-20 4144 locomotive. When the locomotives were introduced, the UP was in the midst of locomotive reformity. This was due to trucks becoming more competitive and they wanted to limit the amount spent on engine crews per train, as well as shorten the time taken for deliveries of goods. The boom period of the mid-1920s meant that more goods and passengers were being taken around the country, and, as a result, trains all over the American railroad system often required two or more engines to pull one train. Consequently, more money would have to be spent on engine crews and maintenance. Whilst most railroads were either content with this system, or simply couldn't build larger locomotives for various reasons, the UP did not see this as a long-term option, and decided to build a colossal machine to deal with the problem, hence the 9000s. With the tractive effort of £96,646, the class was the perfect solution for the UP's locomotive problem on the flat plains of the Midwest. To further help with the immense strength, the locomotives were built with 67 inch or 5 foot 7 drive wheels and 3 cylinders, 2 high pressure outside cylinders and 1 low pressure inside cylinder. The size of the wheels helped with strength because smaller wheels meant more rotations per minute and allowed for more steam to be exerted through the cylinders. In addition, the choice for 3 cylinders instead of just 2 allowed for more power to be generated when moving and that power to be shared more equally across the cylinders resulting in less wear over long periods. However, the engines were not perfect because they were restricted when it came to route availability. One of the biggest reasons was its most iconic feature, its wheel arrangement. Despite being fitted with four pony wheels, two trailing wheels, and having the third and fourth sets of driving wheels flangeless, meaning they just rested on the rails, their rigid frame meant that they couldn't go through any of the steep mountain passes with tight curves, such as Sherman Hill in Wyoming, or the Wasatch Mountains in Utah. The Challengers With these problems in mind, the UP were going to design a new class of locomotive using the 9000s as a reference guide. The class that would ultimately come from this would be the 4664 3800 class locomotives better known as Challengers, as dubbed by UP Vice President William Jeffers. The 3800 class would roll out from Alco's works beginning from 1936, and would become renowned successes with many railroads taking inspiration from the design, and build their own Challengers, such as the Western Maryland M2 class of 1940, and the Norfolk and Western A class of 1936. In addition to being a national inspiration to other railroads, the Challengers would also see the most modern locomotive features of its day, with roller bearings on all axles, and circulators in the firebox to help boil water evenly. The locomotives would achieve a larger tractive effort than the 9000s, and have a larger route availability due to the articulated frame. An articulated frame is when an engine's frame is split into two or more sections, which have quite a few benefits. For example, it allowed a larger engine to negotiate tighter curves with ease, in addition, it allows an engine to have a minimum of four cylinders, leading to an increase in power output. However, there are some downsides. If the cylinders are exerting too much steam when moving, then the exhaust beat will cause damage to the track, and this was the exact problem with the Union Pacific's early articulated locomotives from the 1910s. Another downside is that there is more maintenance required due to the increased amount of moving parts. 
Even though the class did nearly have 100,000 pounds of tractive effort, they were still too weak to climb the mountain pass coming out of Ogden into the Wasatch Range, and double heading was needed when climbing the steep grades, resulting in time wasted on the journey. The Big Boys These issues would lead to the UP asking their chief mechanical engineer, Otto Jabelman, to design a new locomotive that would solve all the previous issues of the 9000s and the 3800s, and he would succeed in astounding fashion by creating a monster, fittingly called the Big Boy. At 40.47 meters long, this 4884 would grab the title of the largest steam locomotive running in the world after the Pen CS1 was scrapped in 1946. The tender alone, when fully loaded, is heavier than a Boeing 747, and with attractive effort of an extremely impressive figure of 135,375 pounds, the locomotive was more than what the UP needed. Despite this, the nearly 60,000 pounds more pulling force was vital during the US's period in World War II, from 1941 to 1945. These engines were also rather quick, despite their sheer size, being able to reach a speed of 80 miles per hour and could handle a 3,300 ton train unassisted at Wasatch. These factors meant that there was no need for a large fleet of them, and only 25 were built at Alco between 1941 to 1944. When the class was being built, they were originally going to be called the Wasatch class, but a worker at Alco's workshop chalked the name Big Boy on the smoke box of number 4000, the first of the class, and the name stuck to this day, with 4014 having the same chalk marking recreated on her smoke box. The Big Boys would remain unbeaten as the Kings of Steam, but would have a competitive rival in the form of the N&W Y6B2882s built in 1948 for coal drags out of Virginia. Their pure strength would be a big factor in helping them survive in service for as long as they did, because there was no diesel at the time that could even have the possibility of rivaling them until the DDA-40X class, nicknamed Centennials, by AMD in 1969. Challenges try it again. With the success of the big boys on full display, it was decided that the Challenger design should be retried and perfected, and this was in the form of the 3900s, also designed by Yabberman in 1942, for both passenger and freight work. These were a mix of both the old Fedder Challengers from 1936, and the big boys with the ability to run at high speeds of 70 miles per hour and halt freight trains of roughly 3,000 tons unassisted. After the design was accepted by Union Pacific and put into production, a total of 105 Challenger type locomotives were built by 1944, bringing the number of their so called superpower locomotives to 218. With the creation of the 3900s, the older 3800 Challengers were classed as light Challengers, as the new ones were 482.4. To 484.9 metric tons, a minimum of 78.9 tons heavier. Modifications to the Titans During the late 1930s, the UP experimented with coal to oil conversion on the Challengers, with the last six of the Feta variants to decent results. They would do it again from 1942 to 1944 due to restrictions on fuel consumption during the war to successful results, and decided to have a go at doing the same to the big boys, with number 4005 being the chosen metal guinea pig. She was converted to oil burning in 1946, by having her fire grates removed and replaced with an oil pan and an oil burner to mixed results. The test found that the locomotive was cleaner in terms of pollution produced, but it was very heavy on fuel consumption and it was converted back to oil burning in 1948. Even though the conversions on the big boys was considered an overall failure, the success of the Challenger's conversions led to the idea remaining as a possibility in the future. The conversions would begin again in 1949, with one being converted, and 10 more having it in 1950 after having an oil to coal conversion in 1949. In 1952, the final conversion project was undertaken, with 17 getting it. As well as the Challengers, some of the 9000s were converted to oil burning to increase efficiency. However, the superpower fleet would not be able to last forever. The first to go was the 9000s between 1953 to 1956, with the Challengers being withdrawn between 1959 to 1957, 
and the big boys retiring between 1959 to 1962. Preservation On a good note, there are still examples preserved from each class. Number 9000 is preserved at the Locomotive and Railway Society's Museum in Pomona, California. Two examples of the Challengers survive with 3985 running excursion trains between 1981 to 2010 and 3977 being on display. Finally, eight big boys are preserved, with seven being in various places across America and 4014 in active service since 2019 doing excursion trains all over the country.